Hi guys, so now we're going to be looking at our calculations which involve our gases. So we're going to state Avogadro's law and we're also going to be doing calculations involving molar volumes, including RTP and STP. So first I wanted to give you a background about how we deal with our gases. So gases occupy the same volume as the container that you put them in. And when it comes to gases, it is very challenging to weigh gases in the lab, and thus it is more convenient to measure the volumes of gases. The volumes of gases are, however, dependent on the surrounding temperature and pressure. Thus, when we are measuring and comparing the volumes of gases, they would have to be compared at the same temperatures and pressures. So gases that have the same volume at the same temperature and pressure contain the same number of particles. And so we have molar volumes, right? Which is literally telling us, telling us what um, one mole, what volume one mole of a gas would occupy. So for molar volumes, it was found that one mole of any gas at room temperature and one atmospheric pressure occupied a volume of 24 dm cubes or 24,000 centimeter cubes. And that is known as the molar volume of a gas at RTP. We also found that one mole of gas at standard temperature and one atmospheric pressure occupied a volume of 22.4 dm cubes or 22,400 centimeter cubes. And this is known as the molar volume at STP. Now, right here is the Avogadro's law. So he was the one who came up with this um, concept that if you do have volumes, if the volumes of gases are the same, and they are at the same temperatures and pressures, you can assume that they contain the same number of particles. It doesn't really matter the identity of the gas. Once it is a gas, this law holds true. Now, as we had said about molar volumes, it tells us what one mole of any gas would occupy. And there are two sets of conditions to know. So at room temperature and pressure, so room temperature and pressure would involve a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius and the pressure should be one atmosphere. And then we also measure our gases at another set of conditions known as the standard temperature and pressure, which is where the temperature is zero degrees Celsius and the pressure is still one atmosphere. Okay, so as you will notice, the volume is a little bit lower at STP than it is at RTP, and that's because the temperature has been lowered. Now, I also want you to know how to interconvert between your volumes. So 1,000 centimeter cubes, well, first, let me just let you know that a centimeter cube is the same thing as a milliliter. If you had 1,000 centimeter cubes, or if you had 1,000 milliliters, then that is what makes up a dm cube. And a dm cube is the same thing as a liter. So that is why I was able to express the molar volumes either in dm cubes or in centimeter cubes. Sometimes the questions specifically want you to answer in centimeter cubes, all right? So that's why we did that. So now, now that we know what to do with our gases, we want to look at some key equations that will allow us to maneuver our way. So as it concerns our gases, we need to know what conditions you are operating under. So usually the question should tell you, are you working at RTP or are you working at SCP? They should tell you that. All right. So one thing you need to know is to find out how many moles of a gas you have, right? So the number of moles of the gas is equal to the volume that you are given, right? And depending on what unit, so if they give you the volume in dm cubes, or if you changed the volume to dm cube, then you divide it by the molar volume, and the volume, the molar volume should also be in dm cube, and it's usually dm cube per mole, and that tells you the mole. So depending on the volume you're given, then you divide it by the molar volume at that specific con um, set of conditions, 
and that will tell you the number of moles. Also, and you could also have done it in terms of centimeter cubes. So you could have said volume given. And if you wanted the volume in centimeter cubes, or if you sorry, if you if you are given the volume in centimeter cubes, you can continue to use it as such. Um, but you have to ensure that the molar volume is also in centimeter cubes. So the key point to take home is that the volume in your numerator should be the same volume that you use in the denominator. So you can have it in centimeter cubes per mole. So let us do a question which asks us to use this, all right? Let's just do a question. So for example, and even though I mentioned to you before that it is difficult to measure the mass of gases, you do get questions in which you are supplied with the masses of the gas and they want you to convert it into volume. So we are going to do questions which involve masses, even though we are dealing with gases. So you are supplied. So you are supplied with 10 grams of hydrogen at RTP. And you could be asked, um, yeah. so in this situation, you don't necessarily have to even use this equation to find a mole. So let me give you a different question. Let's just say you are provided with 10 centimeter cubes of hydrogen at RTP. Calculate the number of moles. Okay, let's do that. Now, we would, being that they gave us the volume in centimeter cubes, I'll just keep it in centimeter cubes. And I know that I was given a volume of 10 centimeter cubes and the molar volume at RTP, so the, the mole of one, the volume of one mole of gas at RTP, is 24,000 centimeter cubes per mole. So these units would cancel out and then that's how you're all gonna end up with moles. So if we divide this now, we end up with um, 4.2 times 10 to the negative four moles, all right? So if I supply you with a volume and I told you what conditions we're working at, you simply need to divide the volume given by the molar volume at that specific te um, temperature and pressure, and you can determine the number of moles. All right, let me look at the other equation that is important, and that is how do you find the volume of a gas, okay? So the volume of a gas would be equal to the number of moles that you are supplied with multiplied by the molar volume, and that depends on what condition you're working with. So let us do an example which involves this. So calculate the volume in centimeter cubes of 10 grams of hydrogen gas. So this is one of those questions now where they can introduce the mass, okay? So in a situation like this, I can't do anything until I know the moles, the molar volume, I should have said this is at RTP. Most of the times you are going to work at RTP. So the molar volume I do know at RTP, but I don't know the number of moles. I would therefore have to calculate the number of moles from the mass that they gave me. All right, so I want you to remember the equations we'd use when we were working with our solids. So the number of moles could also be found from the mass, so number of moles. If you are provided with mass, it's equal to mass divided by the RMM. Now, hydrogen is a molecule which is diatomic. So if you are working out the RMM of hydrogen, it would be two times one because each uh, molecule of hydrogen has two atoms inside of it. So you have to remember the elements which are diatomic so when you're working with them, you know you are supposed to calculate it for two atoms, right? Because it's thrown as a molecule. So in this situation, if I was if I were provided with 10 grams of hydrogen gas with an RMM of two grams per mole, then it would work out that I had 
five moles. Okay, and now that if I did that um, groundwork right there and I know the number of moles, then in terms of the volume of hydrogen that I had now, it would be equal to that five mole that we just got multiplied by the molar volume at RTP. They asked me for the volume in centimeter cubed. So I'm just going to state the molar volume at RTP in centimeter cubed, which is 24,000 centimeter cubed per mole. So when I do that, I would see that I have a total of 120,000 centimeter cubes. All right, if you wanted to express this in dm cube, right, just to let you know, what you would have done is you would have divided the volume in centimeter cubes by a thousand, and that would have converted your volume into dm cube. So this would have been 120 dm cube. I could go even further and let me ask you something else. I could say determine the number of molecules. So determine the number of molecules of hydrogen in 10 grams at RTP. Yes, um, so we had already done the, done the calculation. So we know that 10 grams of um, hydrogen would work out to be five moles. So the number of molecules would be equal to the number of moles multiplied by the Avogadro's number, which is 6.023 times 10 to the 23. So if I had five moles of oxygen gas, then it would be five mole times the Avogadro's number here. And that would be equal to three times 10 to the 24th power. All right, let us continue to do some other questions with our gases, all right? Just to ensure that we understand fully what's happening. So let me give you another one. Um, let's see, determine the number of, um, the number of oxygen atoms present in 1.2 dm cubes of oxygen gas at room temperature and pressure. All right, so when you're given these mole concept questions, right, you wanna see what are they asking me? They want me to tell them the number of oxygen atoms present, all right? Um, so remember that if you want to find the number of particles, the key equation to remember is that it is equal to the number of moles times the Avogadro's number. So in this situation, I know the Avogadro's number. What I don't know would be how many moles. So I know that I'm going to have to spend some time and calculate the number of moles. All right, so because I am dealing with a gas, I know that if I want to find the number of moles, I would divide the volume given by the molar volume. And at this, in this case, it would be the molar volume at RTP, okay? So now, because I was provided with the volume in dm cubes, I would keep it in dm cubes, and I would just state the molar volume in dm cubes as well. So that would give me, so the number of moles I would have would be 0 0.05 moles. But then we have more work to do because this is telling me that I have 0 0.5 moles of oxygen molecules. Now, remember we learned before how to break down a compound into the constituent atoms, right? So we're gonna have to do that now. So if you had an oxygen molecule and broke it down, each oxygen molecule has two oxygen atoms. And they specifically ask about the number of oxygen atoms, right? Let me just put in the atoms. So they weren't necessarily asking, they weren't necessarily asking for the number of oxygen molecules, but the number of oxygen atoms, right? So each oxygen molecule, you break it down, you get two oxygen 
atoms. So this is a ratio of one to two. This is a mole ratio of one to two. So if from my calculations, I found out that I had 0 0.05 moles of oxygen molecules, it means I had two times that amount of oxygen atoms that works out to be 0.1 mole, all right, of oxygen atoms, right? So now I can actually go and work out the number of oxygen atoms present, and that would be equal to 0.1 mole times the Avogadro's number, which is 6.023 times 10 to the 23. So that would give me That would give me 6.023 times 10 to the 22. So in, in this, I would have this amount of oxygen atoms, right? So sometimes you have to be careful. Are they asking you about the molecule, about the compound, or are they asking you about a specific atom, right? And that reminds us that we have to learn how to break down our compounds, okay? So as it concerns the gases, the main thing to note about the gases would be how to calculate the moles of gases from the volume supplied and how to calculate the volume, right? If you are supplied with the moles and you will always be able to know molar volume because those are standard, um, values that you are to remember. And the other key thing to note is that once you are dealing with, like, uh, with gases, it doesn't matter what is the identity of the gas, they all obey this law that we have been describing. And once you have equal numbers of moles or equal volumes of gases, we can we assume they have the same number of particles. So I wanna just state it here again, because this was a very important thing that Avogadro had found out. So he said that if you have equal volumes of gases, at the same temperature and pressure, then they contain the same number of particles. So we can actually use the volumes of gases to tell us how much of the gas we have, right? So that's what um, the Avogadro's law allows us to do. Once we are working with the conditions, the same temperature and pressure, the volumes of gases can basically tell us, basically it's almost as if it's telling us the number of moles. For example, if I said to you, that you had nitrogen gas. They had 10 centimeter cubes of nitrogen gas and it reacts with 30 centimeter cubes of hydrogen to form two um, units of ammonia. Then you can actually predict and I might say to you, okay, so what is the volume of ammonia that you're expecting to form here? Um, you can actually use your volumes, once you know that all these gases are at the same temperature and pressure, and these are all gases, then we can actually use our volumes as more ratios, okay? So what I would do, sorry, using our volumes as more ratios, What you are allowed to do with gases once you are using them at the same temperature and pressure is that you can treat them as how, how you treat moles. So if I divide it through by the smallest value here, I can actually create a more ratio. So I'm actually a one to three ratio, which is similar to what we're seeing in an equation. And then we would have two ammonia. So if I'm wondering how much ammonia I would form, then I would go according to the ratios here. And it would mean, therefore, that I would form 20 centimeter cubes of ammonia, right? Because when it comes to gases at the same temperature and pressure, their volumes can literally be treated as how you would treat moles. You can derive mole ratios from the, the volumes, and then you can use that to, to solve questions, all right? So that concludes our discussion on the calculations of our gases.